Good morning. It's quilt chat time again. Can you believe this is the 44th quilt chat we've done? It's hard to believe. I know. Seems like we just started. I know. <laughs> That's like 10 months worth, isn't it? 11 months worth. Well, we we're going to start today with revisiting the AQS quilt show from here at Spring Paducah. And you know, we live stream the, fa uh, we live stream the awards program uh, from the Carson Center during the program. And now, if you miss that, you can go to YouTube, and then our channel is Quilt TV, and you'll be able to watch the whole thing from the entertainment by Tristan McIntosh, all the way it through the nice. announcements of yes. the winners, and it was, it was a lovely evening, and if you missed it, you want to be sure to go to YouTube and check it out. While you're there, be sure to hit that subscribe button on YouTube, and that means that every time we post a new video, you'll be able to get a chance to go see it on YouTube. It's a handy thing to have, really. It is, um, and it's nice to have an email that just comes mm -hmm. and you just click on it and you get to go to that video. That's right. Wasn't Tristan good? Oh. She really had an amazing performance. She did. She did a great job. Well, you know now why she was one of the finalists on American Idol last right. year. Right. Right. Yes. It yes. was so neat to see her in person. <laughs> yes, and, and her band. She had a five-piece band with her, so that was enjoyable, too. And and they opened the whole evening and the whole show mm -hmm. on Tuesday evening. They got the excitement going. All right, now, Betsy, I know you've been talking about labels. I have. We were talking, it started with a conversation about pressing sheets. Because mm -hmm. with the fuse applique, there's this really cool technique to use your pressing sheet to build your applique on. So over at aqsblog.com, we have a little tutorial on how to use a pressing sheet. And it shows how to make this clever little owl. And he's a quilt label for the back of a baby quilt. Oh, Isn't that cute. fun? So you can write your little name, little baby's name, a little tummy. And he's just an adorable little owl. So you could write on it or embroider it you with could. your machine. Or... And the really cool thing about him is because it's just the tummy piece, you can get that all perfect mm -hmm. long before you build your owl. So right. Oh, sure. You could trace it idea. if you needed to, yes. couldn't you? Yes. And so you can get your little owl ready. You could do it with any kind of little fusible you wanted to. You could build little <laughs> critters and put them on the back of your baby quilt. So and so when you built that, Betsy, uh, yes, you, you built like, you did the eyes first. I did. And then you built the head. And you know, the really cool thing that people, I don't think, guess about it. With fusible, the hard part is um, when you get things in order, the first one usually moves whenever you put the second piece in place. <laughs> <laughs> and so a pressing sheet will hold you you put the first thing in place because you can see your placement chart right through the pressing sheet because you uh -huh. can see through it. And so you just put the iron on the first thing and then it's stuck to the pressing sheet. So it's going to stay Perfect. put. So yeah. I started with his little eyelids and did the little tiny pur light purple slivers on top of them, which were so finicky whenever this eyeball was loose. But as soon as it was stuck to that pressing sheet, no problem. I got yeah, it right in place. Press it in place. Press it in place. Good job. It's so cute. And he's fun. He's very fun. So. Definitely check out that article, and the pattern is there, and it's also with the baby quilt we had in this week, so that you could make it in the same colors you make your baby quilt and put on the back of that. Yeah, cute idea and for baby quilt. They'll find that quilt. on the blog, yes, aqsblog.com. AQS yeah. That is right. But quilt labels are so important. Last week, I believe it was, we had a quilt up, the antique quilt of yours, Bonnie, yes. from your collection. Mm -hmm. Had that nothing one, on it. That's so we had no nothing. idea mm -hmm. yes. who it was from. And antique we would have liked to have given what, credit, yeah. wouldn't sure. we? Sure, yeah, of we course. Always try to. Especially with all that hand stitching. Yeah. You want oh, to give credit gorgeous. where credit is due yeah. for yes. that beautiful work. So that kind of prompted us talking a little bit about labels. And mm -hmm. so, Anne, tell us about the quilt behind us. This quilt is called A Village of My Dreams. It is by Nancy Acker. Uh, she dreams in color. She <laughs> obviously does. Obviously, it was quilted by Mary Frances from a pattern by Kim McLean. And she put all that on the label, didn't she? Yes, she did. She had that all on the label, so we were very, it was very easy to find exactly what we needed to know about this so that we could hang it. And we always give credit at the end of Quilt Chat, so if you're ever wondering about a quilt that we've had up, you can, if you stick around at the very end, we have the names listed. And you'll notice we all dressed in black and gray today because of the bright colors right. of this really pretty quilt. Right. It is beautiful. And you know, it's interesting what kind of information quilters choose to put on labels. Mm -hmm. And um, we did a label survey on the blog 
um, that went out in the On Point newsletter for mm-hmm. people to come and participate in to find out just exactly what cultures do put on labels. And we got some amazing responses. But the most common thing, number one thing you put on a label is the date. Well, every, you know, oh, the majority good. of people sure. said, let's put the date on. And then names was number two. Mm-hmm. So the maker's name, the recipient's name. Well, and you know, when quilt. we did all those quilt search projects by for the individual states, yes, you know, those were the kinds of things they were looking for is who made it, when did they make it, so that we had that documented. Right. Yes. And of course, now we saw on on um, Nancy Acker's quilt, she included the name of the pattern that she used. Mm-hmm. Because, that you know, really you idea? might be entering this in a contest sometime and then have forgotten where was that pattern. I can't find the pattern. Correct. And it's all on the label, so you don't have to go searching. Right. And we have a couple more examples here of some of the quilt labels. This one's particularly fun because she's incorporated some appliques that match the front right here around her little label to kind of tie everything in. And she kind of wrote a little story about when she started the quilt, when she got her appliques done. She said that she used needle turn applique. And this was from Mary Texler. And she printed this out on her computer. And so um, she used it from the Flower Basket Medallion by Kim McLean. She used Kay Facet and Phil Jacobs fabric for all the applique. She started in January of 2015 and finished the applique in August of 2016. Good job. <laughs> and then she, she says she needle turned all the applique and the piecing by Mary Traxler of Hammond, Illinois. And the quilting was done by Joy Voltenberg of Sullivan, Illinois. And she completed the entire quilt February 2017. So she did a really good job getting this done. It has a lot of detail in it. And then at the very bottom, she has this really cool detail where she tells the size of the quilt. It's 86 by 86. Do you know what? If you put it on that label, you don't have to measure that thing again. That's brilliant. Yes, that's a really good idea. And especially contest quilts, things like that is really important to know. And you know, it seems like a lot of information at the time to try to think up all those things and, and be sure that you have it on there. But really, think of if we had had that information for that star quilt, or if you had one of your family heritage quilts. Yes. Uh, it would be wonderful, wonderful to have that level of information. Absolutely. Well, then I have a different style of label on this one, and this is uh, Cactus in Bloom, and it's done with embroidery. And it was designed and pieced by Jackie Kunkel, quilted by Margaret Solomon Gunn, and she finished it in March 2018. This is a quilt I'm very excited about because it's going to be coming up in the September issue of AQ. So we're not going to give, we're not going to show we're not you going to give them a sneak peek. You can just see the backside, and that's it. <laughs> but you but can see the beautiful label anyway. <laughs> Jackie, uh, Jackie is very fond of island batiks, so you can be sure that it's beautiful. a batik quilt, and then the quilting is gorgeous as well. Well, and I don't know if everybody knows, that's uh, so but we actually do a special label that we send back in the box with every quilt that's been hung at our quilt shows. And this one was the one for Spring Paducah. They're a different color. And you know what's really fun is when we open up a quilt and we see that they've already attached that label to the back of their quilt. So they too have a record of where that quilt's been. I think that is so neat. It's like mm-hmm. having one of those chests with all the little postage stamps on it. <laughs> <laughs> it's the back of your quilt. Yes, it's so that's cool. right. How, how far did it travel? Right. right. That is so neat. <laughs> That was a wonderful idea. And you know, quilt labels, there's all different kinds and shapes. Um, two of the really great ideas that came off of out of that survey when everybody shared their ideas was um, a lot of people create an envelope. And so they'll mm-hmm. hide little bits of fabric from the front. So if there were ever any repairs, those would be in there. Oh, That's great a idea. Good idea. Isn't that clever? And that way, if you wash the quilt, the fabric will age mm-hmm. with the quilt. And so you've got something really great for making repairs. Um, and then there was a course like make a little stuffed animal for a kid or tuck a little bookmark with the quilt information, little mm-hmm. things like that. Um, but then other people were like hiding information in there so you could peek in there and see little secret things for kids, which was very clever oh, and yes. cute. 
And there's, uh, you know, people will do uh, histories of the blocks if they are doing something oh, and that's historical. So wonderful. They'll have a whole. They I've seen even books, little booklets oh, made that's up terrific. for that. that and that tuck would go right in the pocket. Mm -hmm. That would be great. Another really great idea was to make your label first. Practice sewing your block so that you can make sure you get all your sizing right and that the pattern's okay. Mm -hmm. So play around, maybe play with changing out some fabric or something like that. So you have all this early work you've done about your quilt so that you know you've got it on the right path and then just use those scraps to make your oh, good idea. label. And I went, well, that's pretty darn it's clever. It's a good idea. You got it all done before you even get started. Mm -hmm. right. <laughs> well, and so this really means we don't have any excuse not to label our quilts today, That's do the we? truth, Bonnie. Yes, we, we need to know. And, well, I have to tell you, once in a while we end up with a quilt entered in our contest that comes and has no label on it whatsoever. You know, if we don't, oh. ha if we didn't have it in the right box, we wouldn't know who it came from. So that's really important, especially if you're entering your important. quilts in a contest. Mm -hmm. You need it the is. label and you need the sleeve on your quilt. That is true. Now, Bonnie, this week um, starts a new month. And so with our Project Quilt 2018 on the blog, we have been doing a different type of quilt project each month mm -hmm. and kind of all of us challenging us to up our skills and try new things. Right. And so this month is pictorial quilts. So I was hopeful you could help kind of outline what is a pictorial quilt. Well, for our category for pictorial, we define that as a person, place, or thing. So like mm -hmm. a noun. And so, yes. <laughs> and so, you know, it could be, it could be a scene, could be a house, it could be a pet. A piece it of could fruit. Be, it could be a piece of fruit, a or still a life. Yeah. Now, to, to differentiate that between a landscape, a landscape could be pictorial because it's a thing, a scene. Uh, but a pictorial wouldn't necessarily be a landscape. Right. Right. Does, does a pictorial have kind of a focus on a specific thing where a landscape can be just a, a scene. gorgeous vista, but you know, like if there's a truck in the very center of it, yes. that would pop it into the pictor pictorial yes. category. And, and the it? quilt mm -hmm. that we had at the Spring Paducah show that was that old truck. That, oh. That's what I was thinking. Oh my of. goodness, Isn't that, that was amazing? a that was a fun that was, that was a fun thing. It was mm -hmm. very cool thing <laughs> that she very used cool in that thing. quilt. Right. So, is a portrait the same as a pictorial quilt? Yes, it would be. It's a, it's a okay. it's a person. It is a person. It I just wondered if it was a different type of quilting. Okay. Yes. So it really is something person, place, or thing fits into the pictorial category. And is there anything special when you're creating one that is important to include or important to do um, for a pictorial or to work? Well, I mean, you need contrast usually. I mean, I would think that's probably that's the main too. thing is that's contrast great, would, would great make whatever suggestion. you want to feature. Uh -huh. You want it you to need pop to off make sure the that quilt. you've got light and dark mm -hmm. contrast to make it do I that. Know. Okay, that helps a lot. And hello to Carolyn in Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> we love wonderful. it when you tune in, and we also yes. like it when you send us questions, too, don't we? We do. Mm -hmm. And thank you for that, Bonnie. That was very helpful. I think that'll help us get started. Right. <laughs> well, and so I just want to mention before we close today is uh, that the we still have until Friday, this Friday, that's two days away, to enter your quilts for the Fall Paducah Contest. And the... Uh, contest for Virginia Beach closes on June 7th so don't don't procrastinate until the very last oh, minute get those in you can do it all online in. We want to see them all <laughs> you just go to quilt week and hit the contest button and if you'll scroll down you can find the rules for all the contests for yet this year and also the 2019 rules are there as well I can't wait to see what's new you know what oh, what somebody's gonna so think fun. up next it's gonna be great that but you know true. every show we do have new things too we don't do we? you we know do. And, oh, new, absolutely. and we new love trends it, so new techniques we, do, we know yeah. they love it too then when they see yeah. new things and yeah. here on this program we try to highlight those for you don't right. we we do now, we have a question yes. about the quilt behind us and that is, is it a pictorial quilt? Or what would you qualify this one as, Bonnie? That's a good question. <laughs> uh, it could be pictorial because it certainly has lots of things on it. Mm -hmm. uh, but I probably would, uh, would enter this in a more um, traditional piece category or applique category. Applique category. Actually, well. it's both. It's pieced mm -hmm. houses and applique True. flowers and applique True. border. It almost is very reminiscent of like the Baltimore album style. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's very reminiscent of that. Yes. Well, it's a beautiful quilt and, and we thank um, 
who did we thank? We thank Nancy. Nan no, yes, Nancy Aker for <laughs> um, for sharing that with us today. And they'll see you next week here. I'm going to yes. be on vacation. She's oh, <laughs> we're excited for her. Yes. So we'll see you next week. Join us right here on Facebook, 11 a.m. <laughs>